be me, 17, living in North Carolina. Semi-rural, an hour or so outside of Charlotte, but not close enough to actually have any city infrastructure. Large swaths of privately owned forest, used only for hunting. It's abandoned 80% of the year with no buildings larger than a plywood hunting blind. I and my father are both lifelong interested in the paranormal and such things out in the world. Every night, we went on a walk to a field up the road from us. Comfy, enjoyable walk with no car traffic and a well-tended dirt road up to a field. Field is tall grass. Several small dirt bike paths crisscrossed the field, all connecting in a crossroads in the middle. Having seen, heard, and felt weird shit out here many times, we would go just to enjoy the nice cool weather and talk. There's a section of the road leading to the field about half a mile long. The woods get much more dense and all the sounds of the highway off in the distance are inaudible in the trees. Super quiet. Always feels inadvisable to spend too long there. It felt watched, like there was something observing and waiting 24-7 from just out of view. Lots of weird smells, burning plastic, rubber, and rotten eggs. Weird shit like smelling a brand of detergent that I haven't smelled since I was a little kid, which then turns into a rotten egg smell. It was bizarre. Not good, not so bad as noteworthy, but certainly not good. Not worth any concern, we just walked briskly through and never gave it much thought. Too many places like that to count. It's not concerning to us at this point. After a particularly weird night standing around in the field, it just felt charged with static electricity, like something was about to explode. Hard to explain, like we were standing in a dam at full capacity, about to explode. We turn towards home and get going, come up to the leg of the journey in the weird thicket. It feels different tonight. That charged static feeling is matched now with the thought of, we shouldn't be here. This isn't wise, I don't know why, but this is dangerous. We need to go home. I don't know why, but this isn't the place for us to be right now. I would learn later that my father was thinking the same thing. We both stop and turn to our left on a dime. When we hear something between a stick snapping and someone pushing through a bush, leaves and branches rustling. We stop, and the clouds clear out a little. Moonlight illuminates what we just heard, not but 20 feet from us. I see the chest first. It's a deer, standing perfectly still. I was curious, but really freaked out. I have seen many deer, I've been startled by deer, and even wandered into grazing groups of deer on accident. Just happened to move barely quietly enough through the brush that I stumble into a group of deer that all freak out when they see me. Never once did I feel instant panic and fear. Fight or flight hair on end type of fear. That kind of fear that you can't articulate until after it happened. It's so gripping that you can't think. All I could do was stare and breathe. My eyes traced up its torso to its neck. My eyes stopped and I stared for a few seconds before realizing exactly what I was looking at. I thought at first, it had its head pointing sideways over its shoulder, like what deer do when they sleep, but the moonlight was bright enough to show clearly that it had no head. It wasn't gore or gross, didn't even really make sense at what I was looking at. Its neck went up to where the jaw would start, but just rounded off and stopped. I stared for long enough that I'm certain it wasn't in a weird position, and I was close enough to see the difference in the color on the chest and back. Then, a weird wave of stale hot hair hit me. It's really hard to explain. It was cold, but a wave of hot air. Like when you open a can that's been in the sun all day. A wave of hot, stale air hit me. And the smell of rotten eggs and burning rubber. Almost exactly at that second, my father put his hand on my shoulder and turned me towards home and pushed me while walking. He and I were speed walking faster than comfortable and said nothing the entire journey home. I still can't believe we put our back to it, but clearly nothing else happened. I asked him later, and we've discussed it since then. He said, because of his shitty eyesight, that he couldn't tell what he was looking at, but that he got that wave of panic and fight or flight, finally broke the tension just holding his breath and turning me towards home and walking. We have passed through there again many times, always feeling weird and 
usually still smelling the same rubber egg smell, but never saw anything else. It probably seems really gay and fake to people who haven't seen anomalous things like this that we ever went back or forgot about it. The reality, at least in my experience, is that if you keep your eyes open and notice things, that unusual things happen far too often to remember. I think most normies would be surprised exactly how easily shit that bizarre can bland into the background fog of memory. I haven't given it almost any thought since it happened three years ago. I no longer live there, but I know people who do still and most still say that area is just as weird as it ever was. Pick related. A recreation I made of what I saw. I should note that I wear glasses and I have great night vision. I didn't see a deer with its head down. It was well lit and my eyes had been adjusted to the dark for hours before this. In this thread, post spooky paranormal green texts that actually happened to you or at least someone you know. Be me, 15, at the time, an undiagnosed schizo, was seeing a bunch of weird creatures and some of them were talking to me and shit, so I thought I was crazy and started learning about mental illness. Started watching a video on YouTube about psychosis. Shadow King Simon, my spirit guide, causes the video to stop and shows the error screen. He tells me those people are going to brainwash me and that I had wronged him by doubting my true connection to the other world, which he showed me. Now, I have to kill my parents as punishment. Held the knife in my hand for a while, looking at them passed out in the living room. Decided I couldn't do it and I refused. Simon possesses me and I can't control my body. Start slicing me open as punishment. In the end, I am grateful for everything that happened that night. I have written about this before, but basically, there is a possibility that my grandmother's aunt is back to haunt my grandma's sister. So, basically, be my grandma's sister, living with your aunt in the same house. The aunt dies and is buried. This was decades ago. Decide that the grave is too far away and want to relocate it to a nearby graveyard. The difference is literally 10 minute drive. Leave the remains in the grave. Keep the gravestone in your garage for decades and symbolically bring a fist of earth from the previous grave to the new one and engrave the aunt's name on the new gravestone. Your sister, my grandmother, then has a dream of a completely white figure that looked severely pissed coming from the direction of the previous graveyard. It was coming towards our house and towards the direction of the new graveyard, as if she had to relocate herself to the new resting place. It is 2022, evening, and your daughter visits you with your granddaughter. The granddaughter comes crying from the bathroom, saying that there is a random lady in there. You check it, and there is obviously nobody there. The family goes back home to the new house, previously owned by an opera singer who had died not long before they purchased the home. The granddaughter complains of being unable to sleep due to hearing some lady singing, and the child is like three years old. She has no capacity to make it up. And to make matters worse, someone has already been buried on top of my grandma aunt's remains. I have several stories that happened to me. One thing just happened last week. Probably means nothing, but it was still weird. I'm German, so sorry for the bad English. Be me. Working in a retirement home. One resident just died the same day. Body is still in her room. Seconds after she died, the light in the room goes crazy. On, off, on, off for no reason. Two years ago, in the same retirement home, another old woman died that day. Me and a few other people are standing in a corridor that connects all the old people's rooms. Talking. Every room has a picture on its wooden door. Nature, animals, flowers, and similar stuff. Picture on the door of the dead granny's room just crashes down violently to the ground, breaking. Picture was on a hook on a metallic leash. Very tight because the nursing staff occasionally slams the door by accident. Several other people witnessed both events. Absolutely terrified. Second story I have. Summer 2012. Walking with mom and doggo through a mountainous forest region in Germany. We were visiting a waterfall. Not that many people there because it was the last day in summer before school starts again. We stay until dusk. All other people already gone. And too many mosquitoes. It's not that dark yet. Car is about 300 meters away. 
Doug is suddenly weird. Nervous. We hear a scream from uphill. Sounds like a mix of a dying cat and a man. Mom. Move faster, Anon. Last thing I now need is dealing with some drunk asshole in the woods. We all three move faster. Same scream, now from behind us. We stop. Can't see shit. Brush is too thick. We continue moving. Scream again. Now under us. Then again. And now it's right in front of us. Whoever is screaming is circling us. But far too fast to be a human. The train is very rocky and steep if you have the designated way. There are no animals in fucking Germany that make such sounds. I've heard owls, foxes, martins, and yes, they all sound fucked up, but not like this. Screaming now intensifies. It gets louder. It is more frequently, and now more sounds like a woman mixed with an angry cat. But it's all one voice. We finally reach the car. Doggo is still weird and angry. Mom looks scared. I look back into the woods. It's now almost completely dark. Anon, you dumb fuck, get in the car already. One more sound. Now like a kid screaming. Fuck this. Back at home. I tell it to my sister. Mom. Shut up, Anon. I don't want to hear about this shit now. It was 2012. Creepypastas were a big thing back then. I was always fascinated by the paranormal, and I had heard of the term skinwalker, but I always just thought it was a Native American synonym for like a werewolf. I didn't know about the shape-shifting or voice-mimicking shit. Mom still gets angry and tells me to shut up to this day when I mention this event. She doesn't believe in any of this X shit. 2008. Summer. Again. Huge thunderstorm. Rain, lightning, thunder, and wind. Can't sleep because of it. Storm's finally over. Now, I can sleep, but I have to piss first. Go piss. Look out the window. Street is wet. Without warning... A white object strikes the road. It's a white glowing orb the size of a soccer ball. It's spinning high speed like crazy for five seconds. Then, it disappears into a creek near the road. Yep, that's a ball of lightning. I did wake my mom up, but it was over before she was up. She, of course, was angry and yelled at me. Here's another one that I already posted in 2021. 2003. Summer. Again. I argued with my mom. I was lovesick because of a stupid bitch in my class that wasn't worth it, and I left the house at 22 o'clock, walking around in the cornfields in the dark near the Autobahn, sad and angry. I stop at the Autobahn bridge. I'm not emo or suicidal, but I think about how it would be to jump, just to end it right there. Back to the street through the cornfields. Cornfields left and right to me. Dark. No moon, no stars. I still manage to see something because the streetlight, a few dozen meters away, illuminate the fields, but not much. I feel watched. Turn around. An orange light, like a bike reflector or a weak flashlight. It wasn't very bright. I can't make out a person holding it, though. I stare at it. It disappears into the fields. I continue walking. Stop again. Turn around. Same procedure again. Five more times or more. Walk faster. I reach town again. Turn around one last time. Light is still there, but it's not moving anymore. I look there for at least five minutes. Still there. I was young, stupid, full of hormones and negative feelings, so I walk towards it. I still can't make out a person holding it. It's just a light. Disappears again into the field. Fuck it. Let's go home. People jumped from this Audubon bridge to their death. Was it them? Did they warn me to not do it? I didn't want to do it anyway. Or did they want me to do it, joining them? Last one. 2004. I'm in the living room watching TV. Little sister, who's nine years at the time, has a friend over, who's the same age. They play in front of me with toys. I'm half asleep. My sister. Hey, name a friend. Have you told Anon about the man in your room? I'm awake as fuck now. What man? I'm thinking pedo or abusive family member immediately. My sister's friend. The gray man. He's skinny. He has no nose or ears. And he has wrinkly gray skin like an elephant. He has black eyes. And he's sitting on my bed watching me. I tell the child to draw him. Looks like a crude child drawing of pick related. Aren't you scared? She is, but she says she can't move. And her mother doesn't believe her. 
I tell her to stop kidding me and scaring my sister. Her eyes become teary. But it's true. Yeah, sure. I know the trope of pale humanoid crawler creatures was always a trope, but it wasn't that popular back then. And The Descent wasn't yet out in Germany. And I don't think she watched it or even similar shit. Many years later in 2011, I learned about the rake and that it was completely made up by Anans here on 4chan. And the similarity was uncanny. Then, one day, I found the famous picture of it sitting on the bed. And I nearly shot myself to death. It looked like a professional remake of the child drawing. Does anyone know who drew it? B12. Be hanging out with friends late at night at my neighborhood. Talking about fears or something. Be near alleyway. Friend mentions about a fear about being cut up by a clown and not being able to do anything. Hear a clown giggle which sounded like it came from the alleyway. My face went dot jpeg. Me and my friends run away to my house. Work and Castle, tourist attraction. Not a significant place, but very old, 900 years or so. One of the floors in the keep gives me the shivers when I look at a particular doorway. One of the trees in the garden, about 300 years old, feels like you're being watched from the branches, but it's not oppressive like the keep. This happens only in the winter months. Visitors come and talk about it occasionally, and some say that they've seen a man at the corner of their eyes inside the keep. One of the women who works there with me had a haunting in her house, where things would be thrown across rooms. When she opens up the gift shop on a morning, she says that there are often books on the floor, and that she hears footsteps upstairs. Visitors get books launched at them from the shelf, or they just fly off on their own. One of the swords in the shop kept falling off of the wall, and almost hitting a particular staff member multiple times. Pitch black locking up the grounds. Hear a stuttering white noise, frantically pointing a flashlight trying to find what made that noise. Just someone letting off fireworks below the walls. I just saw this thread was up after making my own post. I'm not a regular visitor to X, so I'll copy and paste what I put in my own thread just a minute ago. Roughly a year ago, I saw a creature by the gates of a graveyard, where my house was located close to at the time. Roughly 2am as I was leaving to catch a bus to a new city. As I walked past the graveyard's open gates, I would see a really skinny, yet tallish creature. It looked similar to the skinwalker pictures that I would see online, but due to the streetlights emitting so little, the creature appeared black with only visible legs and arms. It walked in a crouched-like movement, and once I looked away, then back at it, it was sitting with its two arms, keeping itself up, and its long-ass legs behind it like it was preparing to run at me. At the time, I remember being frozen and just gazing at its eyes. Its head was fairly skinny, yet fat at the top, and the only part of the eyes I could see was due to the lighting of the streetlights, which made them appear smaller. All I remember at the time is being frozen. Not even in fear, mostly. Genuinely just like a freeze in time, as if I was having some sort of silent seizure. When I finally came to, it seemingly just walked backwards and disappeared within a fraction of the second that I wasn't frozen in movement. I told two people and they sort of did the typical, oh, it's just your imagination, trick of the dark and light. But sometimes, when you know you can trust your brain and eyes in certain moments, I know it's what I saw. Does X know what sort of thing this could have been? My first idea was some crackhead and homeless bum, but the anatomy was generally just something too odd, too unreal. It looks somewhat like pick related, but skinnier, taller, and from what I could see, more dark in color. BKP at local golf club kitchen. Fucking about, shooting the shit. Here. Hello? At the bar area. Waitress goes immediately to see who it is. No one's there. In the entire clubhouse. And this is a big fuck off clubhouse with only one exit. With creaky doors that are heard from the kitchen. Me, the trainee chef, and the waitress all heard the exact same thing. Didn't think much of it at the time, but looking back at it, it's quite spooky. I can't explain it, and I am skeptical as hell. Nothing makes a hello noise in the clubhouse, especially not the door or in the kitchen. Be me. Have supernatural powers. Oh, here we go. 
energy perception, astral projection, and the like. Notice talk about dead internet theory and bots populating the internet. Then watch as AI chat and image generation take off. Have idea. What if a bunch of replies and videos or images on 4chan are made by bots? Keep an eye out for replies that seem off, or have a clear goal of demoralization. Try and link to the person through their text, as I can without fail. Many posts on the site don't have a person behind them to project to. This site is a Potemkin village and propaganda machine. B-19, sleep at girlfriend's house. We've been together for a few months. She has insomnia issues. I have sleep issues. Thinking back, perhaps some bad energy was charged up and good was released. Anyway, do rooms apart for one night, since girlfriend is exhausted. Sleep on sofa bed. 3 a.m. Girlfriend is still caught with insomnia. Dog sleeping next to me in living room. I start growling. Girlfriend feels dark energy in her room. She sees clothes moving softly in our wardrobe. As the dogs keep growling, she said that she heard me sit up and talk in an unknown language. A very deep voice then replied to me in the same unknown language. She managed that I ward off the dark energy, or perhaps I just went back to sleep. Next morning, I wake up exhausted like I didn't close a single eye from the night. Girlfriend tells me this green text. It still gives me shivers. Something weird has happened in this apartment. Drawers slamming, door handles rassling, and a fork moved by itself. Be me, 17. Sitting outside with mom one evening. Mom is feeling down and anxious very suddenly. Says she just feels off, like something is deeply wrong. Suggest maybe going out for ice cream or something. She shakes her head and takes out her phone. Rings up my older sister's number. Older sister's boyfriend answers. I was just about to call you. The paramedics just left. And long story short, my older sister died from acute heart failure at 23. No prior health issues or underlining issues. It was all very sudden. She literally just fell over and the doctors were like, well, this happens, I guess. To this day, my mother can't really explain how she quote unquote knew, but I remember very distinctly her sudden mood shift and sense to contact my sister pretty much out of nowhere. Very eerie. I already put my story up before on another post, but I'll put my story up again because I can. Be me, last year. Lives in the Natomas area. Goes home from party past midnight. It's in the middle of a rain and thunderstorm. I'm now soaking wet. See a scarecrow with a sickle. Scared shitless. Scarecrow chases after me for a long time. I see a bridge and start running faster. Runs over a bridge and escapes. Scarecrow walks away. And I live. Realize I encountered Scarecrow Jack. He's a local Natomas urban legend. Realized I had just avoided death. But I'm alive. I can't remember if I've ever shared this. It's not really X, but it still got to me. Hang around top of cemetery with four friends when I was 13. Note, I was outside of the cemetery, not inside of it. One of them, Fat Andy, is 16. Called Fat Andy because he's like 250 pounds. This is during the autumn and it has really limited light even when it's not that late. Been hanging around there since the summer. Around 8 p.m., every night, some dude comes out of the cemetery. It's not a big deal, people use it as a shortcut. He's a tall, skinny, bald dude with a long ponytail, with the hair that he has left on the back of his head. Where's these sort of wraparound shades? That makes me think he looks like a fly. Leather black biker jackets, jeans, black boots, some band t-shirt. Same get up every time, only the t-shirt changes. Always looks at us like he's going to speak, but he never does, and he walks off. This one night, we decide to go buy snacks at the shop. Shop closes at 8 p.m., and it's around 7.45 p.m. It's about 500 yards away, but it's all uphill. Ask Andy if he is coming, and I already know the answer. No. Says he'll wait there for us. As we come out of the shop, see this enormous object running, coming right at us. It's Fat Andy. He's pale as fuck, out of breath, but that's no surprise, and he's shaking. Ask him what's up. Tells us that the fly guy came out of the cemetery like he always does. But this time, he was looking around all suspicious and holding his jacket closed. Then, 
he saw Andy, and this time he approaches him. Andy's fairly shy, so he doesn't make eye contact with him. He just looks down, sees Fly Guy's jeans are covered in blood, looks up at Fly Guy. Fly Guy pulls a knife out, and all he says is, Listen, before Fat Andy knocks him out of the way and runs to us. Being retards, we go back down there, but he's nowhere to be seen. There's blood on the barrier that we sit on. We never see Fly Guy again. Be my sister. My mother is driving me back home after being across the country. New car, black Mercedes. Suddenly, get the sudden urge to stop. Mother asks why. Tell her I just feel that it's important. Stop at a service station. Engine warnings all light up. Mom calls a mechanic. Turns out, if we kept going, the car would have exploded. They told me this when they got back. The mechanic said the engine would have blown up or something. I think this intuition is paranormal in origin. Maybe it happened in another world, and it killed them. Anything posted in this thread will end up on a text-to-speech YouTube channel in a few days. OP is most likely the YouTuber, probably Midnight Broadcast.